Happy Monday morning, guys. I hope all of you have got plenty of rest over the weekend. Um, hope you're ready to start your week off right. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, so today we are covering George W. Bush again. Remember, that's Bush Jr. because his dad was in office before him, right? So Bush Jr. And today we're going to talk about his foreign policy. So George W. Bush is probably and probably will be one of the um, most controversial presidents, uh, I think, in U.S. history, uh, just because this is such a important moment in U.S. history. And so the way that the U.S. reacts uh, during things like 9-11 and the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan, um, they kind of change the way that the U.S. operates uh, its foreign policy. So let's go ahead and dive on into this. So number one uh, for the do now says, oops, I've got, I've got us on the wrong page here. It says, what is the purpose of NAFTA? Remember, NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement, and that is an agreement between Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. And if we're talking about free trade, right, uh, the reason that we have free trade or relatively free trade between these three nations is because when usually when countries trade with each other, there's a tax on goods coming into your country, right? Uh, and that tax has a specific name. So NAFTA takes away that tax. So make sure that you review your notes and figure out the name of that tax if you can't remember what it is. Uh, number two is what is a national multinational corporation? So if you're not sure about this, let's break down the word multinational. Multi means many, right? And national also means nation. So if we're talking about a multinational corporation, uh, what do you think that means? And number three, writing to learn. Students should vote for student council, but teachers should have the final say over who wins the elections. What do you guys think? Do you think that that's um, appropriate? Does, does that really reflect who you want as your leaders if teachers have a final say in that? And then, of course, the lesson objective. So today, uh, we are going to look at George W. Bush's foreign um, policies. So you guys should be able to kind of give a, a, a kind of a summary, uh, and you should know kind of the sequence of events that go on with that. I, I think we briefly touched this <clears throat> during the last lecture, uh, but we talked about 9-11. Uh, we talked about how the planes had been hijacked by uh, terrorists. Uh, Islamic terrorist, and so as a result, uh, the Twin Towers had been hit. Uh, these are known as the World Trade Center, uh, or they were known as the World Trade Center, and they also called they were also called the Twin Towers. The Pentagon, which is a um, building that's used for national defense, was hit as well. And then another plane was going to hit another federal building, but it actually crashes in uh, a field in Pennsylvania. So if you're interested in looking at the attack. Uh, through, I guess, the lens of, of those of us who were there. Uh, CNN was covering it live, and so were news stations like MSNBC and Fox News. And so there's a clip here if you'd like to watch it. Uh, there's another clip that we watched last time of real accounts of people that uh, really saw this firsthand. I, I will go ahead and I'll make sure that both of these are uploaded if you want to watch those. But we're going to go ahead and move on. So the mastermind behind 9-11 was Osama bin Laden. Uh, Osama bin Laden had, uh, just as, this is just background information, you don't really have to know it, but Osama bin Laden had actually been uh, fighting in Afghanistan during the 1980s. Uh, the Soviet Union had taken over large portions of uh, 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 Asia and South Asia, and so he, along with many other um, many other uh, Islamic groups within the the region, decided to fight against the Soviets. So he had combat experience. He was he was very good at running an organized uh, group of fighters. And so him planning this uh, was not something that um, was probably. It wasn't something. It wasn't something that he wasn't used to. He, he'd been leading an organization for a long time. So, uh, he's the mastermind behind 9/11. And remember, when we talk about groups like Al Qaeda and the Taliban, they represent a very, 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 very small portion of Muslims worldwide, right? 
So let's go ahead and look at the notes on the first section here. Um, so this will kind of just give us an overview. It says, the federal government, and this is under security concerns, effects of 9-11. The federal government responded to the 2011 attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon by creating the Department for Homeland Security to protect the United States from all threats, terrorist attacks, man-made accidents, natural disasters, etc. The September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks led to new federal legislation, the Patriot Act of 2001, and the Department of Homeland Security were both created to solve U.S. security concerns. Some people believe that these were created um, as an effort to decrease American freedom. <clears throat> so let's let's keep going before we answer some of these questions. So before we start, uh, do you think that 9/11? Um, do you think these attacks during 9-11 could have been prevented? Do you think that the U.S. government could have done something to prevent these planes from hitting uh, important buildings? There's another video here that I'm going to that I'm going to show you. Uh, I'll upload it to PowerPoint. Both of these or this video is uh, just another video of kind of how the U.S. is responding to these attacks. So there's actually quite a few people involved uh, with these attacks. There are almost 20 uh, people involved. Uh, most of these uh, individuals had taking, taken flight lessons uh, in order to be able to uh, pilot the planes that hit their targets. Um, and as a result, we have the creation of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, this is a federal organization. Uh, it's a federal... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, guys. I don't know why I'm having... So many, so many problems this morning getting words out. Um, it is a government body that is responsible for the protection of U.S. domestic U.S. citizens, right? So there, the whole idea behind the U.S. Department of Homeland Security is to ensure safety for um, Americans domestically. So we also see the creation of what's known as the TSA. Uh, the TSA is an organization that works primarily in airports. Um, if any of you have ever flown or had to go through an airport, you will see these guys. Uh, they're dressed in blue. Um, they are very picky about airport security. Um, and the reason is, is the whole idea behind having them there is to protect um, citizens like this. Uh, whenever they go into airports and wherever they're flying on planes. So they don't want to see a repeat of 9-11, right? Um, whenever you do go on a plane, uh, you have to bring very small bottles of liquid, right? Uh, you're not allowed to bring things like bats or knives. Um, and there are a host of things that you have to do. Like whenever you go through um, airport security, you have to take your shoes off, for example, and your belt. Uh, so it's it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a process, right? But the whole reason they do it is to ensure uh, airport safety. And I will tell you guys, if you are ever in the airport, um, just do what they ask, do what you're supposed to do. Otherwise, it could cause you to be delayed, um, or they may not even let you on your flight if you're not being cooperative. So it's always important to make sure that you just follow those rules. So during the, <clears throat> oh, and I'm sorry, I believe the TSA stands for Transportation Security Administration. I should have mentioned that. But the, the, the problem is, is that right after 9-11, most Americans are kind of fearful. They really don't know what's going on. They have no idea what might happen in the upcoming weeks. Uh, we've just been attacked domestically. We've never seen anything like this. And so people are scared. Um, and if we look back through history and we think about different periods of when the American public was afraid, we've seen some some mistakes that have been made. We've seen some terrible things happen, right? So one of the examples that I've given here is, if you think back to World War II, 
the Japanese had attacked an American military base at Pearl Harbor. As a result, the federal government had set up internment camps for Japanese Americans, right? Uh, instead of realizing that this was a, an attack by a foreign country, the U.S. government and the public turned its eyes on Japanese Americans, many of them who had been here for generations, and we had put them inside of internment camps and restricted their freedoms, right? We had violated their constitutional rights. So the criticism with the Patriot Act, the Patriot Act is, is basically, and we, we, we touched on this a little bit, but the Patriot Act is basically a set of laws that are passed uh, in order to... <clears throat> in order to better protect Americans from another domestic attack. Now, there are, there are people who are for, there are people who are against it. Uh, one of the big reasons that there are critics against the Patriot Act is that it gives the federal government and state governments a lot more powers to um, surveillance. So, you know, the, your phones, you know, they, they would have access to your phones. Uh, some of the searches that you do on major search engines, they can get that information. And so um, many people see it as a restriction of your personal freedoms, right? So again, let's look back on that first paragraph. We had, we've already read the paragraph, so let's take a look at a couple of these questions. Uh, number one says, what was created after 9-11? So if you will review that paragraph, you will see exactly what was created after 9-11. What is a pro and a con of the Patriot Act? So again, if you look at the paragraph and you read carefully, you'll be able to see that. And so just make sure you put both um, the pro and the con. I need one of each. So... This is, again, this is the man right here behind 9-11, the mastermind. Uh, this is Osama bin Laden. And this is our president at the time, George W. Bush. If you look at this map right here, uh, it's kind of a, it's a map of both the Middle East and uh, Southwest Asia. And right here, Afghanistan. This is the region that we will invade uh, after 9-11. And we're going to kind of talk about why we go into Afghanistan. The interesting thing about Afghanistan is that Afghan this is not the first time that Afghanistan has been invaded. Um, many empires have tried to invade Afghanistan uh, and, and control it. Uh, more recently, before 9-11, the Soviets uh, had invaded Afghanistan and they had gotten themselves stuck in a 10-year war with the Afghanist, uh, with the Afghan people. Ultimately, they lost. Um, many people make the comparison, because remember, when we think about Vietnam, right? We had invaded a foreign country. We didn't know much about it. Um, the people themselves were fighting for their own, um, kind of their own freedom. And so they're, you know, a lot of people draw comparisons between the Afghan war and the Vietnam war. So the Soviets get involved in a 10-year war, and ultimately they pull out. They, they leave. So let's take a look on the global war on terror. So we're going to read this paragraph together. It says, The underlying reason for the greater involvement of the United States in Central Asia and the Middle East following September 11, 2001, was the need to wage war against global terrorism. The United States invaded Afghanistan and overthrew Taliban rule for shielding Osama bin Laden. So, basically, when we went into Afghanistan, the Taliban controlled three-fourths of the country. So they effectively ruled Afghanistan. After 9-11, President George W. Bush... Uh, demanded that the Afghanistan government hand over bin Laden because bin Laden was living in Afghanistan. And the Afghanistan, Af the Afghan government rejected President Bush and refused to hand over bin Laden. So in 2001, U.S. forces invaded Afghanistan looking for Osama bin Laden, and they also overthrew the Afghan, or the Taliban government, sorry. So let's take a look at a couple of these questions. Why did George W. Bush attack Osama bin Laden? 
So what did we say that Osama bin Laden was responsible for? We just we just talked about that date. It's a really important date in American history. What was Osama bin Laden responsible for? Number two, what is the Taliban? What is the Taliban? So let's take a look at the paragraph again. It says the underlying reason for greater involvement of the United States in Central Asia and the Middle East following September 11, 2001 was the need to wage war against global terrorism. The United States invaded Afghanistan and overthrew Taliban rule for shielding Osama bin Laden. So we haven't really gone over what the Taliban is. I will go ahead and just tell you guys. Taliban was a political and military movement in Afghanistan. Um, they, they're they also, I guess you could say they're a political, military, and religious movement in Afghanistan. And they were in charge of the country until the U.S. invasion in 2001. Uh, what country was housing the Taliban? So we just went over that. Just went over number three. What country was housing the Taliban? Where where were the Taliban located? Which country? Okay. And then below that, there is a summary question. It says, why did the United States issue a global war on terror? Why did we issue a global war on terror? What one event, we've been talking about this throughout the lecture, what one event in the United States caused the global war on terror? There's a specific date. American soil is attacked. Okay. So, <clears throat> this gentleman right here, uh, his name is... Saddam Hussein, he is the ruler or the leader of Iraq, right? Um, I believe he rules Iraq from it's the, he rules from the late 1970s all the way until 2003 when the U.S. invades. However, this is not the first time that the U.S. has invaded Iraq. Remember, we talked about this. Uh, in one of our earlier lectures, the U.S. had invaded Iraq because Saddam had invaded Kuwait, remember? Saddam invaded Kuwait. Kuwait was an ally of the United States. And when Saddam refused to leave Kuwait, the United States invaded, and Saddam had to pull out his troops from Kuwait and surrender. So fast forward about 10 plus years later, um, George H.W. Bush, the president at the time, remember? Now his son is in office. And as a result of our war on terror, right, the United States divide, decides to invade Iraq again. And the reason they decide to invade is because the United States thinks that Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, or WMDs. Weapons of mass destruction are um, weapons that cause uh, large-scale destruction, right? So we're talking about nuclear bombs. We're talking about dirty bombs, right? <clears throat> so as a result, the U.S. asks Saddam to allow inspectors into the country to take a look at their missiles. They refuse, and so the U.S. invades Iraq. I remember when I was... I guess I was 12 or 13 at the time. I remember turning on the television and watching the news and watching this statue of Saddam in the middle of Baghdad, the country being torn down. It was a huge event. Uh, the whole world was watching whenever this happened. And citizens, Iraqi citizens, were pulling down his statue. It was a, it was a moment that I will remember forever. So let's go back to our notes here. Under review, what was George H.W. Bush's involvement in Iraq during the early 1990s? What it, we just talked about this, so if you need to just go back, go back a couple of minutes and listen. We just talked about George H.W. Bush's involvement in Iraq in the early 1990s. So, 
let's take a look at this timeline. This is a timeline of the United States military in Iraq. Uh, so it's from March 20th, 2003 to December 11th, 2001. So March 20th is the official date of the evasion into Iraq. There's a couple of important points here. The fall of Baghdad, the country in April. We see uh, years later, we start to see more troops being committed. Um, and then eventually, during the Obama administration, a, debt, a date is set for uh, complete U.S. withdrawal from Iraq. So under timeline, according to the timeline, how long was the U.S. involved in Iraq? So take a look at this timeline right here and give me the year that we invaded until the year when our date for withdrawing was uh, completed. So take a look at that timeline and make sure you answer that question. And then guys, the rest of this is just independent practice. So let's go ahead and read the parag this paragraph together. It says, in 2003, U.S. forces invaded Iraq in search of weapons of mass destruction and to protect its interest in the Middle East. Saddam Hussein's dictatorship quickly collapsed, and the U.S. established a democracy. Conflicts between ethnic groups in Iraq made the war more difficult to fight. In the end, Iraq did not have any weapons of mass destruction. U.S. federal debt dramatically increased as a result of military spending. So we invaded Iraq because the U.S. government believed that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction, and it turns out that he did not. So number one says, why did U.S. Tr US in invade Iraq? It's right there in the reading, guys. So review the reading if you need that answer. Which two presidents were involved with wars in Iraq? <clears throat> Remember, we just we just talked about a father and son duo, right? Father was president first, and the son was president second. Which two presidents am I referring to? And should the U.S. have invaded Iraq? What do you think? Do you think that we should have gotten involved and invaded Iraq? All of this was because of our global war on terror, right? We invaded Iraq because of our global war on terror. And then below that is a timeline, right? There's a timeline here of important events that we discussed during this lecture. So if you're having trouble, if you're having trouble with this, reference your notes. Go back up to your notes. Check out those uh, paragraphs, right? Those reading paragraphs, and they should be able to give you dates and events as well. So um, I am going to be available um, because I'm having internet problems today. I'm going to be available for um, questions on my phone today, and I'm also going to be available for questions tomorrow, Tuesday the 12th, from 11.15 until 12.30, okay? <clears throat> so that's it, guys. I hope you have a really, really, really fantastic day. I hope your week is even better. Uh, we are we're getting close to the end of the school year here. Um, I just I want to emphasize, guys, please continue to work hard. Um, we're very close to finishing. If you would, um, could you please? There's a link I need you guys to access, and I don't have that up right now. Give me one second. <clears throat> I thought I had this on one of the slides, but I don't. So, one moment. I'm going to put a link up here, if you wouldn't mind. Using this link, I'm also going to put it on your um, on your notes as well. Uh, so make sure you use that link just to show that you've logged into this class, and it's a way for us to take attendance. Okay. So again, I'll be on tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, if you need anything in the meantime, you can email me or hop on Google Meets. Have a great day, guys, and I will talk to you later.